What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking about how to target bass during the fall to winter transition. We are almost there. We're almost to that winter time in bass fishing, and we all know what that means, right? That winter transition from fall to winter, you're transitioning from those fish up, moving quickly, chasing shad balls, chasing bait balls around to kind of slowing down and really transitioning into or moving to where these fish, their, you know, their winter haunts, where they're going to be wintering all winter. And if you're not on these fish or staying with these fish as a transition, sometimes it can leave you feeling lost, right? We're all out there during the fall. We're catching them on top water. We're catching them on, on fast moving baits. These fish are eating a lot. They're active. They're eating a lot of different styles of baits. Then all of a sudden that light switch, right? Colder weather means colder water, which means those fish start slowing down and you can't catch them on uh, necessarily on all the baits you've been catching them all fall. So today's video, we're going to cover some of my favorite baits, my most confidence baits, uh, baits that I have the most confidence in because as this bait slows down, the bite slows down and it can be really, it can leave you scratching your head sometimes wondering if you've missed the bus, right? You know, where did these fish go? So when you get less bites per day, it's harder to feel confident and it's harder to uh, develop a pattern, right? So my confidence baits, these are the baits that I have tied on right now, all the way through into the dead of winter. We'll talk about that and uh, we'll talk about some of the reasons why. So depending on where you are in the country, up north, you guys have already started you know, basically that full on winter, winter bite, if you're not iced in already or iced out already, uh, you know, down South, obviously you're a little bit behind us here in Tennessee, but, uh, it, it's coming down in Texas. It's coming out West. It's coming, you know, that colder weather. And, um, I like fishing in the colder weather, you know, you might not get as many bites. You might not catch 20, 30, 40, 50 fish a day. Like you might've been during the fall. You might not be catching them on top water per se, but your chances of catching a true giant skyrocket, right? These big fish need to eat. So now is kind of the time where I start transitioning my mindset into fishing those key pieces of structure, those key locations on the lake and actually picking back up the big bait. So we're going to talk about that here. There's two ways to make or to get a bass to bite, right? You have their basic fool them, right? Your, your fool them response where you're dragging a, let's say a Ned rig. They swim over at it, swim over to it. They kind of look at it. They're like, yep, I'm gonna eat that. So you fool them, right? Or you're swimming a big eight inch Huddleston by them. They think it's a real trout there's no really reaction. There's no really uh, core instinct to react to the bait. It is just seeing and eating. The other way is the way that Matt and I have preached for years, the way we really like to ca uh, catch them. And that is triggering that core predatory response, that core uh, response that that fish has to react and has to eat, even though it might not be in the mood to eat, right? It's that whole cat and mouse game, drawing that bait past with some speed or some movement and triggering those fish, turning them on to, to react to your bait. That's, that's 90% of how I fish from now all the way through winter. So you can either fool them or get them to react, but one of two ways is how you're going to get bit this time of the year. And, uh, I really like keying in on that, uh, that reaction bite. But, uh, let's say, let's say, well, let's figure out where these fish are going to be, right? As the water temps drop, as maybe your lake levels are dropping, 
those fish are going to pull back. They're going to pull back out of the, the shallows, uh, get into some more um, consistent water levels, consistent water temps. They're going to pull off to like your main lake points. They might pull off to like your offshore humps, your high spots out in the middle of the lake, the high spots. Maybe it's a high spot down in 20 foot, but everything around it's 60 foot. So they're gonna be out there on those high spots. They're gonna be on those key rock edges or rock piles. Maybe it's a, a ledge or a, uh, you know, a secondary point. That's, I'm looking for rock this time of year. So if I could find that, if I can find rock on a hump or rock on a main lake point, uh, that's where those fish are going to winter. And uh, that's what I really key in on. If the bite is really slow, if I have tried all the reaction stuff, we're gonna we're gonna cover that last. We're gonna talk about two, basically two baits that I have rigged on this time of the year all the time. Um, if the bite is tough and I need to slow down and finesse fish, I basically have one of two baits. I have some kind of jig and a Ned rig. Okay, let's talk about the jig. Basically, a finesse football jig. Okay, finesse football jig paired up with a, that's a Yamamoto, that's a five inch uh, twin tail grub. This is my bread and butter. It's a bait that I can fish deep. I can, I can really have good contact with that rock. I can feel that rock edge where it meets maybe that, that sand bottom or mud or clay bottom. Those fish are gonna be right there in that rock. And usually I'm just kind of dragging it. I'll pop it up drag, shake it a little bit, but I'm using a, a heavier finesse football jig. I can still get big bites. I know those fish are, are relating to that rock, uh, but that is my go-to. Now, if I'm fishing that and I'm not getting bit on the bigger jig, two alternatives. One, I'll go with like a little micro jig, something I can really finesse them with something a lot of guys aren't throwing. I mean, look at that compared to that uh, finesse football, just quite a bit smaller, okay? This is a bait that I have a ton of confidence in and it just kind of verifies, yeah, there are fish here or no, there's not fish here and then I'll move on. But if I, it's one of those days where it's just post frontal cold, just sucky conditions and I can't get bit on the jig, that's when I go with the micro jig. And then on the flip side, if you're a guy that doesn't want to throw a big finesse football with a big weed guard and everything on it, you can just take your favorite football jig heg, okay? And take a Yamamoto hula grub and fish this. Rig it the same way you would as if it was a trailer on the back of a jig, but now you have a exposed hook and a good little jig presentation. I really like throwing these when it gets really cold. If if I'm out there fishing, maybe I'm wearing gloves or it's, you know, it's not truly winter yet, but it it feels like it. Uh, and I don't, I can't really move. I'm kind of bundled up. I'm using an exposed hook on my jig versus a jig with the weed guard. Now with this jig, like I said, I'm dragging it, I'm popping up, I'll be more reactive with it, try and try and trigger those fish to eat. But if I'm just doing that, that slow drag kind of shake, that's what I'm going with this guy right here, okay? So finesse fishing, I'm going with a jig, a version of the jig. And when it gets really, really tough and I can't get bit on anything, that's when I'm going with a Ned rig ultra finesse just puts fish in the boat when other techniques won't. Um, it's one of the, it's just a super confidence bait for me when I feel like I suck or the fish just suck and they're just not wanting to eat. So uh, a Ned rig, either like your favorite uh, finesse, you know, the, the TRD, the actual Z-Man, little Yamamoto, Ned Senko, or the Robo Worm. Those are my three favorites. Uh, X-Zone actually makes a really good one too. That one floats, high float. But uh, I'll link all these baits down below in the video description. But more importantly, why? Uh, it's just a bait that's not intrusive. It's ultra 
ultra finessey, super easy to fish. And when the fishing gets tough, you know, I might be fishing, I might pull out to a main lake point and I've thrown all of my reaction baits that I'm gonna talk to you about here in, in a second. And I've tried the jig and I'm seeing fish down there on my 2D sonar or my electronics, whatever. And I just cannot get them to bite. This is my last resort, that Ned rig, especially this time of the year into winter. You know, it's not really a drop shot or anything like that. I'm going with that Ned rig. Those fish are down there rooting around in the rock. They're relating to that rock and having a little, a little jig head down there is my go-to. So that's kind of my fool them uh, finesse baits, right? Slowing down, I'm not really creating a, or triggering a core instinct for them to, to react and eat. Just kind of down there soaking it, dragging it. I might hop that jig a little bit, but I'm dragging it. They're looking at it. They might decide yay or nay to eat, right? But those are my finesse baits. That's when the bite is ultra tough. Now, complete 180, let's talk about triggering those fish, making those fish bite when they don't want to. Um, they're not in a, maybe it's not a bite window, they're not in that, that feeding up mood, but you can really trigger those fish. And that's what I enjoy. You know, when it's, when it's 30 or 40 degrees outside, uh, you're, you're, you're cranking that crankbait, you're throwing that A-rig, you're moving around, you're burning calories, you're warm, right? You're not just sitting there shaking, dragging that Ned rig. I enjoy power fishing this time of the year. Uh, and my number one bait for that is gonna be this, the speed crank. You guys, we've talked about this, we've taught this technique now for several years against popular uh, belief, against you know the book of bass fishing, you can still trigger a, fa a fish to a bass to react to a fast moving bait in ultra cold water. Speed cranking, two of my favorite baits to do it. This guy right here, that is the Mega Bass Deep X 300. Great sound, real thin lip, what these two baits have in common, common is they're really tight wobble. You want a really tight wobble, uh, kind of a finesse crankbait, if you will. So that guy right there, that Mega Bass Deep X 300, and the bait that Matt and I designed several years ago, specifically for right now, all the way through winter, the Tactical DD Crank. Again, great sound, great color choices in both. This one runs a little bit shallower. The Tactical runs a little bit deeper but we're throwing this on an eight to one or a seven to one gear ratio reel and we are just burning this thing. Burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 pause. We have caught fish down water temps in the mid to high 30s doing this technique right there. So we're covering water. You know, we're fishing those main lake points. We're fishing bluff walls. We're fishing rock outcroppings, we're fishing humps, but we're covering a lot of water and we're doing it quickly. Again, these are two of the best baits on the market made for right now, speed cranking. We absolutely love it. And we have caught, you know, coming from the, the West Coast and coming from the whole swim bait scene, out there, it seemed like a lot of these fish, a lot of those fish had just gotten used to the big baits, right? They've seen the Huddlestons, they've seen the Savage Gear, they've seen the, at the time, the Bait Smiths, now the Hog Hunter, they've seen a lot of that stuff. But when we were burning these crankbaits by them, we could get those giant fish, those double digit fish to react and eat. And you can too, guys. We've caught so many big ones throughout the country, speed cranking when everybody else on the lake is sitting there shaking a drop shot or dragging a Ned rig. It is really, really cool and it keeps you warm. Along those same lines, we're moving, we're covering water. My number two bait for this is gonna be the Alabama rig. Specifically, this is the uh, mini flex rig. This is a rig that uh, we developed with Hog Farmer a couple years ago. We de developed the flex rig the reason being we like having lighter wire on our A-rigs. There's a lot of good A-rigs on the market. You're not gonna break wires, uh, you're gonna catch fish, but what we found throughout the years, 
when you're fishing around a school of bait fish or you see a bait fish ball, you can see they kind of swim together and they kind of condense and then shoot off. And that's when you'll see those bass blow up through the bait balls. So what we learned, we, I mean, we used to have these custom made with ultra light wire. We'd break them, they were so light. But every time we would give a rod pump, uh, like pump, pump and get that thing to condense, that whole bait school condenses and then expands, condenses and expands, we'd set the hook. Those fish were tracking this bait ball, if you will, and when we got that whole ball to condense and expand, it was like that is that reaction, that predatory instinct. Oh, I've been spotted, time to eat, right? So we wanted to bring something to the market that was perfect. You don't have to worry about breaking wires, but you still have some flex to it. You still have some movement. We went with six wires. So we have three dummy wires, three wires where you can put um, hooked baits, check your local regulations. I know Arizona, you can only have two. Some states you can have five. But check your local re regulations, but more importantly, that flex rig. And we went with a mini. We added that to the line last year because we wanted to downsize the entire rig. So we're throwing 3.8 Kitex, 4.3 Kitex on there and really triggering those fish. But again, just like the crankbait, we're covering a ton of water. The cool thing about this size rig, we might be only using an eighth or three sixteenths or quarter heads. So the rig itself is not very heavy. So you can use your favorite jig rod. You can use a rod you already have in your lineup. You don't need a big swim bait rod to throw this guy. And it is a blast. You throw it on a 200 or 150 size reel, seven to one gear ratio reel. And again, you're covering water, you're moving quick, you add those rod pumps in and they straight eat it. Three dummy baits, three baits with hooks. They smoke this thing. Speed cranking and A-rigging are my one-two punch for covering water this time of the year and putting a lot of fish and big fish in the boat. Next one up for me, gonna be a little bit slower, okay? So as that water temp slows, I might be struggling with that A-rig. That's where I'm gonna slow down. I'm gonna go with the jerk bait. A jerk bait is good most months out of the year. The, about the only time of the year I don't throw a jerk bait is really those summer months. You know, pre-spawn, post-spawn, fall, winter, I'm throwing a jerk bait. Now, just like the crank bait, it's gonna be a crank, it's gonna be a jerk bait that has uh, a different action, not as erratic, not as loud as a jerk bait I'd be throwing in the you know the post spawn, the warmer weather months. Uh, you know I'm I'm gonna be throwing something that's ultra finessey. I'm gonna be throwing something that that when I slow down my my rips and my my cadence, rip. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand. Rip rip, let it sit one, all the way up 12, 15, 20 seconds, those fish are sitting there looking at it. Again, cold, right? They're not gonna come from as far uh, away as they would in the fall with those that, that warm -er water. You have to slow down your cadence. And in my opinion, that Vision 110, you know, that sets the bar for all jerk baits. Ultra realistic, ultra finesse sits good in the water. Um, that 110 plus one junior is my go-to bait. They have they have a long time to look at that look at that bait. They might be trying to key in on that. I'm just going to eat it right. But when you add that rip, now they have to react. So that jerk bait, light wire hooks, light lime, eight, ten, maybe twelve pound test, but for the most part, ten, sometimes eight, depending on water clarity. But that jerk bait. Guys, a ton of confidence. You can get well in a hurry, even when the bite sucks. If you're throwing a Vision 110 Junior Plus One in the right color, you can catch a ton of fish, even when other guys are warming. So the Speed Crank, the A-Rig, Jerkbait. That same situation where you're, you're looking at your electronics and you're seeing those fish down there on bottom, they might be in I don't know, 18, 20, 25 feet of water. 
and uh, you think you could be throwing a jig or a Ned rig or really finesse fishing them, that is when I like to throw or at least try a blade bait. A blade bait, it's that, it's a vibration bait, right? Uh, the original Silver Buddy was designed to fish in ultra cold water. It has a, a real tight kind of action. You let it fall, flutter it up, let it fall. A lot like a lipless crankbait in that uh, pre-spawn, in that post-spawn fall time. But I kind of lose the baits with rattles, and that's when I go with that metal bait. It just works better in colder water. It's not as loud and... Uh, as obnoxious and my two favorites in this category the Demiki vault that's going to have a more aggressive kick to it and then as that water cools i go with that mega bass dyna response it's got a little bit different uh tail for the lack of better words tail on it it slows that fall it 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 tightens up that, that 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 flutter, so it's not nearly as aggressive as the vault. So I will start with the vault. If I can't get them to eat that, or they're swiping at it, that's when I'll transition to the Dyna response. But when those fish are down there relating, relating closer to bottom, or maybe you're fishing the back of a cut, but you're fishing the creek channel going in, you can see those fish are sitting right there on the ledge of that creek channel, you know, just fluttering that that uh, that blade bait down there, letting it fall, flutter up, let it fall. A lot of times you won't even feel the bite. They're just they're just kind of they suck it up and you go to hop it and it's heavy and they're just on, right? But it's just it's an alternative. Again, triggering those fish versus dragging that jig, kind of uh, totally up to you for you to kind of figure out what the fish are telling you on your fishery. But that is a great great alternative. One other bait. Now this one, this one's kind of a larger category because we're talking everything from little finesse swim baits, underspins to big swim baits. So let's just talk about a swim bait. We're getting back into that fooling a fish or triggering a fish, right? So I have baits in both categories for you. If you're a guy that wants to catch fish this transition into winter, I can't send you home without talking about some kind of finesse swim bait or underspin, okay? Something in that 2.8 or three inch range, size range, uh, that's a little underspin with a Largo shad on there, a 2.8 Kitek, uh, a three and a half inch Easy Shiner. Those are all great, great baits, but some kind of finesse swim bait. Again, you're casting it out there, and you can fish this near bottom. You can fish it where you'd fish that jig and just creep it along bottom. Sometimes that blade, you know, will just kind of be fluttering around down there, adding some flash, a little bit of vibration. Um, it's why we designed this. This head itself has got a longer arm on there so that that bait and uh, blade, that, that blade clears the bait and can actually spin at slow speeds as you're down there on close to bottom but to some kind of underspin where you can just creep it get that thing down there kicking again you're not getting that reactive bite you're getting that you're fooling that fish into it but uh that is a fish catching machine right there going up in size okay this is where it gets really fun winter time cold water it's a great time to target the biggest fish in your fishery. It is your chance to catch the biggest, baddest, hungriest fish out there, right? So either it's a Huddleston 68, like a little six inch swim bait or an eight inch swim bait. Maybe it's the Savage Gear or the Huddleston, okay? We're talking, taking that main lake point or that hump, that offshore hump, and you're bombing these swim baits out and you're just bringing them back. Again, you're not tricking these fish into eating, you're not triggering these fish into eating, but they see a dumb, lazy meal, they choke it. Some of the hardest bites I've ever had have been in the winter time on a big swim bait. They pound it. Um, those big fish, they don't want to cover a lot of water. They don't want to 
as that water temp cools, they don't want to waste a lot of energy chasing around shad or chasing around bait fish out there in open water. They're gonna hunker down on that key area and that is your best chance at getting that fish to eat, right? You can try that speed crank, you can try that A-rig, try and really get them to react. If it's one of those days where they're not reacting, take that swim bait, like I said, either that Huddleston 68, that's that six inch swim bait with an eight inch tail, or the Savage Gear, the Savage Gear comes in great colors, has a, an area for you to put a stinger hook on there, but either way, a big swim bait versus the little swim bait over those key areas, I guarantee you, you will at least get some of the biggest fish in the lake to look at your bait, okay? On the flip side, if you're trying to trigger that big fish and that fish is in a little bit shallower water, you know, we're throwing these guys anywhere from like 12 to 35 feet of water, right? And we're just creeping them along bottom. That's that wedge style tail, that vortex style tail. It's just, right, super natural. Slow speeds, getting those fish to eat the bait. On the flip side, if you're fishing a little bit shallower or you're fishing a key piece of structure that's on, I mean, heck, it might even be a, a river swing or a channel swing with a, a huge ledge, right? It could be down where it breaks off to 60 foot. But if you have a tree standing, eight, 10, 12, 15 feet right there, and you want to throw a bait to get those fish to react, a glide bait. This guy right here, that bait sanity, that's that Chimara Shad. Um, the Chimara Shad, it's a really cool bait, swims, it swims awesome. But the point of throwing the glide bait is you can get those fish to react. Another great one is that uh, that Spro Chad Shad, right? You can do the creeping thing just like you would with your, with your swim bait, your soft swim bait. But every once in a while, just like that A-rig, you add that twitch, twitch. So that, that bait is swimming left to right, right? Left to right. Twitch, twitch, shoots off, twitch. It's that cadence change, that speed change, and that faster directional change that gets that fish to commit. Even if it's that dumb, lazy bass, right? Just following that bait. It's something you can't do with this. If, if this if a big fish is following this, all you can do is really speed it up or slow it down. You can't do much of a directional change at all. And most times when you speed it up or slow it down, you mess things up. Whereas with the glide bait, when they're tracking that bait, right? And that big sub comes up and she's tracking that bait. When you shoot left and then shoot right, it's go time. And that is when you're gonna get your bite. So again, having uh, a little bit shallower water or key pieces of cover near that deeper water, those are key this time of the year. So give yourself an opportunity to trigger those fish, tap into that predatory instinct and get those fish to eat. That Shmara Shad's an awesome one. That Chad Shad's a good one. That Spro Chad Shad. You know, the S-Waver, we talked about that for years. There's a lot of great glide baits out there. Those are some of my favorite th favorites that are readily available. You could go to a tackle shop right now and get them. Uh, you know, a lot of those garage baits, you're gonna pay top dollar for them and you're probably gonna have to get on a waiting list or get lucky on a drop. So um, those guys right there, great, great baits. Um, I can't say enough about throwing a swim bait, a soft swim bait down near bottom during those cold weather months. A-Rig works great, the speed crank looks great. I mean, works great. These are my confidence baits. These baits right here. Again, if the going gets tough, I'm going with the, the jig or the Ned Rig, but other than that, I'm going with that. I'm trying to get those big bites and I'm trying to make them react, right? That's kind of my, my thought process and the way that I target fish all the way through winter. Um, 
That's my confidence baits, guys. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. I'll try to get those as soon as possible. But don't be afraid to get out. Less boat traffic. Those fish, they're going to be in the key spots. Again, if you haven't been on them dur during this transition, you know you were on an epic top water bite you know, offshore top water bite, spots on bait or, or whatever, right? If you haven't stayed with those fish, you kind of lost where, they, where they've where they gone, look for those main lake points, look for that rock on the main lake points, secondary points, fish along those bluff walls, those channel swings, uh, again, those isolated pieces of, uh, of cover on the channel swings, and then those isolated rock piles, offshore humps, those are the key areas. I look, I do a lot of side imaging, waypointing and then once i figure out where i need to cast I, i'll come back to it i'll cut the big motor off way short and uh and then get to work again reaction 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 if you need to then slow down and try and fool them but guys this time of the year that transition is a great time to catch some fish but catch some really, really quality fish. Guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.